Violence on top of violence after Israel's military targeted Lebanon in the Gaza Strip following a rocket attack on Israel, which came days after a police raid on a mosque in Jerusalem during Ramadan. It is one of the heaviest bombardments in years, and we're on the ground with that report. Plus, when you stop people who have been elected by the people from doing their will, that is when democracy dies. They were ousted from office for leading a protest on the Tennessee House floor following that fatal shooting in Nashville. And now, with the eyes of the political world on the state, those expelled lawmakers are fighting back. And... Your voice is nice. Why don't you come down to the studio? Actress and five-time Grammy-nominated singer Chloe Bailey sits down with our Lindsay Davis to talk about her latest project, bringing her voice and acting chops to viewers across the country. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Phil Lipoff in for Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us tonight. We are following those stories and much more, including the latest on the investigation into the deadly stabbing of Cash App creator Bob Lee on the streets of San Francisco. Plus, from Donald Trump to the Pope, how to spot a deep fake. We're going to go behind the AI tech and, and give you what you need to know to spot the real from the fake. And concert tours are set to become a billion dollar industry for one major artist. So will it be Taylor Swift? Will it be Beyonce? Who will reign supreme? We're gonna take a look by the numbers. Our correspondents are fanned out across the world, covering those stories and more for us tonight. But we begin with the growing violence in Israel and what that could mean for the region and beyond. After days of back and forth attacks between Israel and Palestinian groups in Lebanon and Gaza, there is a new wave of violence on the streets of Israel tonight. Earlier today, a deadly car attack at a park in Tel Aviv killed one tourist and injured at least three others. And a separate attack, two British Israeli sisters were killed after a Palestinian militant opened fire on a settlement near the West Bank. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is now calling up all reserve forces and Israel's border police to, quote, confront the terror attacks. The wave of violence is taking place during a holy time of the year, Passover for Jews and Ramadan for Muslims, a convergence of the two major religions' holidays that only happens a few times a century. Chief National Correspondent Matt Gutman leads us off tonight from Tel Aviv. Tonight, that deadly attack on Israel's most populous city, surveillance video being examined by police, showing the vehicle racing down Tel Aviv's iconic promenade, killing one and injuring at least five others. The car flipping over. Video posted to social media showing Israeli police surrounding the overturned vehicle and opening fire. Israeli authorities saying they shot and killed the Palestinian driver as he reached for a weapon. A short time later, we were at the scene. You yep. walked down here. Yep. What did you see? Uh, as I walked down here, I saw uh, three pe people laying on the floor, two of them uh, being treated by uh, first responders. The incident escalating already simmering tensions in the region. Earlier in the day, two British Israeli sisters were killed in a shooting attack on this car in the West Bank. Their mother, critically wounded, airlifted to a hospital in Jerusalem. That attack, blamed on Palestinian militants, followed a rapid volley of attacks and retaliation between Israel and Palestinian groups in Lebanon and Gaza. It began early Thursday. A heavy barrage of rockets fired into Israel from Lebanon, triggering sirens and Israel's Iron Dome interceptors. That salvo, the largest Israel has faced since 2006, reportedly a reaction to clashes this week between Israeli police and Palestinian worshippers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount, one of the holiest sites of Islam. Israel responding to the rockets with an aerial assault of its own, first over Gaza and hours later, another over southern Lebanon. Phil, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that he would call up the military reserves, also the border guard reserves. This is something of a veiled threat about a possible broader incursion. It's also coming at a time when both Israeli officials and Palestinian militant group officials have said they had hoped to de-escalate the situation as hundreds of thousands of people are congregating in Jerusalem right now to celebrate Easter, Ramadan and Passover as they coincide in this very unusual time of the year. 
Phil. Matt Gutman from Tel Aviv tonight. Matt, thank you. Next tonight to the fallout in Tennessee after Republicans expelled two Democrats from the state legislature, allowing a third Democrat, the sole white woman, to stay for their gun control protest on the House floor after the mass shooting at Covenant School. The extraordinary punishment now drawing national attention. Earlier today, President Biden tweeting this photo of his conversation with Representatives Jones, Pearson, and Johnson, the president thanking them for their, quote, leadership and courage. And Vice President Kamala Harris, in a last-minute schedule change, traveling to Nashville tonight, meeting with the three representatives. Yesterday, Justin Jones and Justin Pearson stood before their colleagues, arguing to keep their jobs. Jones and Pearson were voted out. Gloria Johnson survived by one vote. What Representative Johnson said she, when she was asked why those outcomes we're so different. ABC's Alex Perez leading us off tonight in Nashville. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris traveling to Tennessee to meet with the Democratic representatives ousted by the state's Republican-led House. Expelled from the House of Representatives. The futures of those representatives now in the hands of local officials in their districts who have the power to reappoint them. Representatives Justin Jones, Justin Pearson, and Gloria Johnson all faced expulsion after they violated decorum last week. We will not be silent. Interrupting proceedings, demanding gun reform, leading a crowd of demonstrators through the House floor, Jones and Pearson using a bullhorn. The black lawmakers expelled, but Gloria Johnson, who is white, surviving removal by a single vote. Why do you feel like there was a difference in the outcome between you and your colleagues? I will answer your question. It might have to do with the color of our skin. Justice will come. Those protests coming on the heels of the deadly Nashville Elementary School shooting that killed three staffers and three nine-year-old students. Jones and Pearson calling their ouster political retaliation and a public lynching. They cemented their legacy on the wrong side of history. Yeah. Democrats across the country weighing in. The Tennessee Congressional Black Caucus outraged. The world is watching Tennessee. And yet again, they're watching it for the wrong reasons. Former President Obama writing, this nation was built on peaceful protest. Uh, silencing those who disagree with us is a sign of weakness, not strength, and it won't lead to progress. Alex joins me now from Nashville. Alex, we're hearing former representatives Jones and Pearson could actually get their jobs back pretty soon. Well, Phil, they could very well have their seats back by next week, maybe as early as Monday. Nashville City Council and officials in Memphis, where Pearson is from, have indicated they intend to hold a vote to reinstate the representatives. They would serve until there's a special election, and they could run again. Phil? Alex Perez from Nashville tonight. Alex, thank you. Next, the Pentagon is investigating how classified U.S. and NATO plans to help Ukraine's military ended up on Twitter and Telegram. Was it a leak? Was it a breach? ABC senior White House correspondent Mary Bruce has the latest. Tonight, growing concerns as more and more top-secret classified Pentagon documents are being discovered posted on social media. Dozens of pages of sensitive material dealing with everything from China to Iran's nuclear program to North Korea. It comes as the Pentagon tonight is investigating how classified documents about U.S. and NATO plans to assist Ukraine in the fight against Russia were leaked and posted on the Internet. Those documents, most of which we cannot show, paint a detailed snapshot of the Ukrainian battlefield on March 1st including training schedules and locations for Ukrainian troops, weapons delivery schedules, and casualty updates. Pictures of the documents appeared on social media this week, but ABC News has found that some were posted on the Internet in early March, shortly after the documents were drafted. The photos include visible creases, as if the pages had been folded to fit in a pocket. A U.S. official saying the documents are no longer relevant to the battlefield, adding that they are of limited intelligence value and appear to have been altered from the original documents. For instance, the number of Russian fatalities was significantly reduced in the photo posted online. But the fact that this top-secret material appeared on the Internet so soon after being issued only deepens the security concern. And now to New Mexico and an officer-involved shooting that began with a tragic mistake. Officers called to the scene. It was a domestic dispute, but then it went terribly wrong. They went to the wrong address, and it only gets worse from there. Here's ABC's Will Carr. 
Tonight, New Mexico State Police are investigating after police in Farmington shot a 52-year-old man in his own home. There's nothing I can say that will make this better. Farmington's chief of police says his officers were responding to a domestic violence call around 1130 Wednesday night when they went to the home of Robert Dodson. It was the wrong house. As officers were verifying the address, the homeowner came to the door. The man, Robert Dotson, was armed with a handgun as he opened the door. What followed was a chaotic scene. Officers retreating and opening fire. The chief says killing Dotson. Dotson's wife, also armed with a handgun, started shooting, leading to an exchange of gunfire before realizing it was police. Neither Dotson's wife nor any of the officers were injured. This is a, a very dark day for Farmington PD, for our community, for the Dotson family. I extend nothing but my deepest condolences to the Dotson family. Tonight, three officers are on administrative leave, and some members of the community are calling for the police chief to resign. We do know there is body cam footage, and authorities say they plan to release that to the public over the next week. Phil. All right, Will, thank you. And there are some new details tonight from the investigation of the fatal stabbing of tech executive Bob Lee in San Francisco. Tonight, Police now say whoever stabbed him did not take his phone or wallet. And this comes as we are getting a look at the surveillance video of Lee's final moments. DeMarco Morgan reports in from San Francisco for us. Tonight, new clues in the investigation into the fatal stabbing of tech executive Bob Lee. Police are reportedly studying these security images obtained exclusively by the DailyMail.com. This one showing a person, a possible witness, walking with a suitcase across the street from Lee while he was bleeding to death. The 43-year-old father of two seen on security cameras stumbling up to that apartment building after being stabbed in the chest. Location is 365 Main, crossing a Folsom and Harrison. Stabbing. Lee collapses to the ground, then musters the strength to stand up as police arrive, but he later died at the hospital. That area does have a lot of surveillance video. There's buildings and private businesses, and we are checking every shred to see if we can piece this together. We are out there knocking on doors and, and walking the, the pavement to make sure that we find every piece of evidence that's out there. Lee was found with his cell phone, which he used to call 911. And we are now learning Lee also still had his wallet. And DeMarco joins me now from San Francisco. DeMarco, what more are you learning about the investigation tonight? Well, Phil, we can tell you that the wallet that was located, police won't confirm if anything was missing in that wallet, but we have also learned that it was staying about a half mile away from where he was found in a hotel. Still, uh, police are searching for a suspect and sending out pleas for anyone who has dash cam video from their vehicles or any surveillance video. They're trying to comb through everything to try and get this killer off the streets. Phil? DeMarco Morgan from San Francisco tonight. DeMarco, thank you. And on this Good Friday, Pope Francis is missing a traditional event for the first time in his papacy. The Vatican announcing the 86-year-old pontiff would not attend because of cooling temperatures. Amid health concerns, will he preside over Easter Sunday Mass? ABC's Marcus Moore is at the Vatican for us. Tonight, as tens of thousands gather in Rome's famed Colosseum to mark Good Friday, there is one notable absence, Pope Francis. For the first time since becoming Pope 10 years ago, he is not attending, instead watching from his residence. The Vatican announcing the Pope's cancellation just hours before, citing, quote, the intense cold. Just last week, Pope Francis spent three days in the hospital battling bronchitis. Tonight's traditional stations of the cross procession would have had the 86-year-old Pope outdoors for hours in the unseasonably cold weather. He's been a little bit under the weather, so maybe it's uh, okay that he's resting. Pope Francis keeping a demanding schedule this Holy Week. Earlier today, presiding over a service inside St. Peter's Basilica using a wheelchair. Standing to kiss the statue of Jesus. It's beautiful that he's out of the hospital and that he wants to be with us, especially at Easter. And Phil, tonight the Vatican has given no indication that Pope Francis will miss any other events. He is expected to deliver the Mass or preside over the Mass both on Saturday and Sunday, as well as deliver his blessing to the world on Easter. Phil. All right, Marcus Moore from the Vatican. Marcus, thank you. A Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas is responding today after a report that he accepted lavish trips from a Republican mega donor without making financial disclosures. ABC's Terry Moran reports. 
Justice Clarence Thomas facing a storm of criticism for accepting lavish vacations for years from a billionaire Republican mega-donor and not disclosing them, answered his critics today, explaining in a statement that the donor, Texas real estate mogul Harlan Crow and his wife Kathy, are among our dearest friends for over 25 years. Thomas adding that early on in his tenure in the court, he'd sought guidance from my colleagues and others in the judiciary and was advised that this sort of personal hospitality from close personal friends who did not have business before the court was not reportable. The vacations Thomas shared with Crow were extravagant. Island hopping on a super yacht in Indonesia, international flights on private jets, fishing at a luxury private resort in the Adirondacks. And they contrast with how the justice publicly described his tastes. You know, I don't have any problem with going to Europe, but I prefer the United States, and I prefer seeing the regular parts of the United States. Supreme Court justices are not bound by any code of ethics, unlike lower court judges, and Democrats want to change that. There's absolutely no reason why the Supreme Court shouldn't be subject to a code of conduct just like every other federal judge. Terry Moran joins me now from Washington, and Terry, has Chief Justice Roberts weighed in on this code of conduct issue? He has, Phil, and he is not happy with the idea. It's been years, but Chief Justice Ron, John Roberts sticks to his position. He does not believe that Congress has the constitutional authority to impose a code of conduct on Supreme Court justices. His theory, Congress can impose a code of conduct on lower court judges because Congress creates the lower court. But the Supreme Court, Roberts argued, is created by the Constitution, and there's a huge separation of powers issue for Congress to impose the rules. So instead, Roberts advises other justices to, quote, consult with the rules for lower court judges. Phil? Hmm. All right, Terry Moran, thank you. There is some big news out of Texas to bring to you tonight, another major setback for the abortion rights movement in this country. As a conservative, Trump-appointed federal judge in Texas has ruled to suspend the FDA's approval of mifepristone, a medication abortion pill, just a short time ago. Mifepristone was approved by the FDA more than 20 years ago. Since its approval, it's believed more than 3.7 million U.S. women have used it. In his opinion, the judge wrote, quote, simply put, FDA stonewalled judicial review until now. The ruling is paused for seven days, so the federal government may appeal. A new jobs report released shows 236,000 jobs were added in March, indicating a slight slowdown in what has been a very strong jobs market. The majority of those jobs were added in leisure and hospitality, government and healthcare industries. Another piece of encouraging news, the labor force participation ticked up to its highest level in three years. The unemployment rate also fell to 3.5 percent, just above a 53-year low of 3.4 percent set back in January. Overseas in Russia, investigators have officially charged Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich with espionage. The 31-year-old journalist was detained last week and has since been jailed in a Moscow prison. Officials in Russia say they caught Gershkovich red-handed while spying for the U.S. government, a claim he denies. His team has filed an appeal that will be heard on April 18th. Still much more to get to here tonight on Prime. Coming up, Malala Yousafzai is taking her fight for human rights to the silver screen. A Nobel Prize winner telling us why she's bringing her advocacy to Hollywood. But next, from a former president's indictment to a pope's wardrobe, fake images are flooding social media and misleading people around the world. We take a closer look into deep fakes. This is sort of like the beginning of social media when social media had zero regulations and no one knew what was going on and it was the wild, wild west. That's what's happening with AI-generated imagery. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. We begin tonight here in Buffalo, London, in Alaska. Uvalde, Kentucky, reporting in from Poland. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? Did you ever have a conversation about an abortion? Is she lying? Yes, she's lying. Arguably the most controversial Supreme Court ruling in history. Mm -hmm. What's the impact on you now? Do you have a future political aspiration? Absolutely. You ready for this? Go! He ran for Senate president, now running for governor. I take it you like to run. <laughs> this is the calling card. ABC News Live! Oh, You're going to deliver a show that will be remembered forever. Woo!
The pressure on me. Finish this sentence. I want young girls to know. <sighs> I mean, you are just a <laughs> tough, bad bleep. <laughs> So much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? How cute. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Former President Donald Trump's criminal charges have dominated the headlines and images flooded social media, but not every photo circulating online is real. Fake photos were shared by thousands of users all over the world. It is a problem that even the Pope is not immune from as artificial intelligence creators post pictures and videos of public figures all over the internet and sometimes putting them in compromising positions. As the use of this technology increases, many are questioning the potential dangers as people become unsure of what is real. ABC's Stephanie Ramos takes a closer look at deep fakes. As cameras captured in real time the arraignment of Donald Trump, deep fake photos like these swirled around social media, seemingly showing the former president struggling with authorities, at times appearing to run away from them, and even posing for a mugshot. They may look real, but none of them are. This is an entirely new era of misinformation and disinformation. Fake imagery is going to be really dangerous if there are no regulation or rules around them. Trump's campaign now even attempting to use the doctored photos to his political advantage, selling this t-shirt emblazoned with a fake mugshot. In fact, Trump did not have his mugshot taken when he surrendered to authorities. And he was not tackled by law enforcement on the streets of New York City. All these artificially generated images viewed millions of times, showing just how fast fake photos can spread like wildfire, and with it, disinformation, as technology has evolved and improved to the point where experts say it's getting harder to figure out what's fact and fiction. And this is a field that's been around for about five or six years, but it's suddenly become much more accessible, easy to use, and commercialized. And so what we're seeing is ordinary people taking these tools and playing around with them, creating all kinds of bizarre and funny images, but also some Im images that could be deceptive or malicious. This is sort of like the beginning of social media when social media had zero regulations and no one knew what was going on and it was the wild, wild west. That's what's happening with AI-generated imagery. With the 2024 presidential campaign season underway, all these worries have added to the larger conversation surrounding artificial intelligence, deep fakes, and its political impact in a deeply divided America. Social media has already shown us the harm that powerful technologies can do without the right safeguards in place. President Biden calling his Council of Science and Tech Advisors to the White House just this week to discuss the risks AI could pose. AI can help deal with some very difficult challenges like disease and climate change, but also have to address the potential risks to our society, to our economy, to our national security. It's becoming easier to not believe things that are true and say, look, you know, I just don't know how to trust anything because anything could be generated by AI. And it undermines this sense of a shared truth that is already under threat. It's a threat that's been growing for years. The deep fake photos of the former president only skimming the surface of what's possible with rapidly advancing technology. We as technologists have to take more responsibility for the technologies that we are developing and unleashing on the world. 
Like this video, it shows the dangers of deep fake technology by manipulating world leaders into saying what the creators wanted them to say. Is it not hard for democracy to collapse? It's essentially a detective game. You're given an image, a video, or an audio, and you're asked to determine if it's authentic. And this happens almost on a daily basis now. Experts say that women are subject to the majority of deep fake crimes when their faces are edited into pornographic content. Hollywood actresses like Wonder Woman star Gal Gadot, Emma Watson, and even Taylor Swift have all been the subject of deep fake videos. The issue is so widespread that platforms like Reddit and even Pornhub have banned deep fakes, calling them non-consensual content. Big Hollywood studios have sometimes taken advantage of deep fake technology for their films. The Star Wars franchise using it to complete the rise of Skywalker after Carrie Fisher died before its completion. This mission is everything. We cannot fail. We expected Amy to win. So. But it's not just the big screen. The most popular videos are ones that have gone viral on social media. You see, I would never say these things. From former President Obama to Spider-Man. We have to shut it down. It's the real thing. With technology <laughs> developing enough for individual graphic artists to be able to create videos so realistic, it's hard not to believe your eyes. What's up, TikTok? Like this TikTok. You guys cool if I play some sports? Just a day on the golf course for the Top Gun star. Except this is not Tom Cruise's TikTok. And this is not Tom Cruise, but an eerily uncanny recreation made by this guy. I'm Chris Yume. Uh, I live in Belgium. I'm 31 years old and I'm uh, an AI, AI uh, specialist and a VFX artist as well. His videos of a fake Tom Cruise have been viewed millions of times online. To create something like this, it's not easy. Because on one hand, you need you need a professional actor. And on the other hand, you have me. I'm a deep fake specialist. I, I've been doing VFX for years. This is a five second impression of a snapping turtle coming out of a shell. People are always scared for technology and, and we have to learn how to handle this stuff. We have to, to learn how to find confirmed sources uh, uh, to make sure the authenticity of those videos are re that it's real. But new AI tools like OpenAI's ChatGPT and Dolly and Midjourney have made it easier than ever to create convincing machine-generated text, images, audio, and video, making it even more difficult to discern what's real and what's not. My colleague Rebecca Jarvis sat down with OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, who says society needs time to adapt to this technology. They need time to feel the technology, to see how it's used, and to go through a few iterations so that we can get to the right set of regulations. But time is running out with fake videos spreading online of President Biden using his voice, saying things he's never said, demonstrated in this clip from Pod Save America. Biden will be back on Pod Save America this year. That's not hyperbole, folks. Biden out. That was obviously fake. That was artificial intelligence. Elon Musk and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak joined more than 2,000 industry experts, executives, and others urging all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4, citing profound risks to society and humanity. Is this technology going to have the kind of impact that maybe social media has had on previous elections? And how can you guarantee there won't be those kind of problems because of ChatGPT? We don't know is the honest answer. We're monitoring very closely. And, and again, we can take it back. We can turn things off. We can change the rules. Take a look at some of the faces in the crowd. Their faces aren't clear. It's not a crisp image. Mm -hmm. They look melted. Spotting a fake picture generated by artificial intelligence is not that simple, but there are still some clues if you look close enough, like this AI-generated photo of the Pope wearing a trendy white puffer jacket. So when we look at a photo like this, how can we determine whether it's fake or real? If we zoom into his hand, it's not particularly well-defined. And then if you look at his glasses here on the upper right, they sort of like disappear into the background. Like there's something a little bit off about it. 
Emmanuel Saliba is a senior reporter focusing on misinformation at ABC News. She sorts fact from fiction for a living. But for those of us at home scrolling through our phones, sometimes it's easy to fall prey to the dangers of AI-generated photos. At one point, AI couldn't really quite get human hands correctly, but a week later, it figured it out. So something I'm, I could tell you today is not gonna be a, a visual cue in a week. Do we as consumers have a responsibility now to be able to determine what's fake and what's real? A lot of experts I spoke to said the onus really should not be on the individuals mm -hmm. to try to figure out whether something is real or not. We need to put the onus on companies. What we're realizing. In fact, last year, the White House unveiled a roadmap for companies to follow, the AI Bill of Rights. To help guide the design, development, and deployment of artificial intelligence and other automated systems so that they protect the rights of the American public. As we move forward toward another election, what is the political impact of a photo like this? Well, the political impact of a photo like this is that it's going to influence public perception of a candidate. Now, there are many ways that I think we're gonna see this play out and that's why having this conversation now and raising public awareness is super important. Our thank you to Stephanie Ramos and our entire Nightline team for that report. Meantime, there is still much more to get to here coming up from TV shows, movies, her first solo album, Chloe Bailey is forging her own path. She tells us about her latest acting project and what it's like to release an album without her sister. It is scary, it's exciting, and I feel like a baby bird who jumps off the tree for the first time and is realizing they actually have wings and can fly. But next, the race for the biggest tour in 2023. Will it be Beyonce or maybe Taylor Swift? We're going to take a look at which superstar could make history by the numbers. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. America's number one news. ABC News. Most watched. Most trusted. And streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Name, image, and likeness, or NIL. The three magic words that have upended the landscape of college sports as we've known it. It's just the ability to make money through social media marketing. It changed everything. My concern is how is it handled? Critics will say people like yourself are buying these athletes. I mean, what do you say to that? Cashing in. The debate over paying college athletes. Impact by Nightline. Now streaming on Hulu. With so much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. At a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners. And the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby. It was crazy. Behind the table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
For over 20 years, we've given some real-life superhero moms the mother of all surprises. Oh, my goodness! It's GMA's Breakfast in Bed. This is amazing. I had no idea. And now, this year, we want to give our biggest, most epic live Mother's Day surprise yet to the most deserving mom. Oh, my goodness. So go now to goodmorningamerica.com or scan this QR code to find out how to enter to share your mom's story and honor her the GMA way. This is where the newsmakers come first in the morning to be heard. America's number one morning show. How would your mom feel about your relationship with your brother now? I can't imagine what it feels like to go from $20 billion to $100,000. Yeah. Are you worried about going to jail? You write that you had low-grade depression. Mm -hmm. How'd you get out of that? Wherever the story, ABC's Good Morning America is right there. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey, I'm David Muir. Wherever the story, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. As the live music industry enjoys a roaring comeback, there is talk of the first ever $1 billion tour. So will Taylor Swift or Beyonce set that mark? We're going to take a look by the numbers. Taylor Swift's Karma Tour is raking in up to $12 million a night. She sold out all 52 U.S. tour dates so far with her highest ticket prices yet. Meantime, Beyonce hits the road next month with 57 sold out Renaissance shows so far in the U.S. and over Overseas. The current tour record, $800 million set by Elton John's farewell tour. Of course, he's still saying goodbye, so that number could actually change. Ed Sheeran holds the record for the highest grossing regular tour at $776 million. He did it by playing 255 nights at $88 a head. Swift and Beyonce are charging more than double that with far fewer shows. Based on current numbers, Swift's current schedule will bring in up to $600 million, but she hasn't announced any dates overseas yet. As for Beyonce's early demand exceeded the number of tickets by 800%. Industry watchers say it's likely she could add dates as well. And it's not just Swift and Beyonce who are poised for huge years. Bruce Springsteen, the boss himself, Madonna, and Pink are packing stadiums and arenas. The Weekend and Coldplay are crushing it outside of the U.S. And Depeche Mode and Drake are selling out tours that begin later this year. And there is much more ahead here on Prime. She's one of the world's most revered advocates for women and children. Malala Yousafzai talks about why she's taking her power to Hollywood, helping others tell their stories. It's not about promoting a specific point of view. It's all about giving a chance to a person to tell a story from their side. And actor Demian Bashir tells us how his new fantasy film is turning a classic tale into an extraordinary journey. What does it take to be America's number one news? It takes asking the straightforward, tough questions. Do you believe that Donald Trump should ever be president again? How would your mom feel about your relationship with your brother now? I can't imagine what it feels like to go from $20 billion to $100,000. Yeah. Are you worried about going to jail? You write that you had low-grade depression. Mm -hmm. How'd you get out of that? The newsmaking interviews. You said that there were six friends. One of them was sick. Yeah. Do you have future political aspirations? Going to the front line. The search for survivors. How does this war end? And getting to the heart of the story. Thank you for being here. We'll be here for the long run. ABC News, number one in the morning. The number one newscast. Number one in daytime talk. Friday nights, Sunday mornings versus the competition. And the number one streaming news. Thank you for making ABC News America's trusted, straightforward, first choice. With so much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. 
This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. Free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. For over 20 years, we've given some real-life superhero moms the mother of all surprises. Oh my goodness! It's GMA's Breakfast in Bed. This is amazing. I had no idea. And now, this year, we want to give our biggest, most epic, live Mother's Day surprise yet to the most deserving mom. Oh my goodness. So go now to goodmorningamerica.com or scan this QR code to find out how to enter to share your mom's story and honor her the GMA way. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. 13 women opened their doors to the man who would end their lives. Truth and Lies, The Boston Strangler, the new true crime podcast series. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts and watch Boston Strangler starring Kira Knightley, streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back. We're going to catch up with singer and actress Chloe Bailey to discuss her first solo album and her new movie role. But first, the next chapter for Malala Yousafzai, the youngest ever Nobel Prize laureate, is diving into film producing with the movie Joyland. Zoreen Shah sat down with her and the film's director. She is a global icon who has dedicated her life to the education of women and children. Now, Pakistani activist Malala Yousafzai is bringing her star power to Hollywood. How are you bringing your activism to art? Storytelling uh, has been at the center of my activism. I began my campaign through storytelling. The story she's spotlighting plays out in the movie Joyland. up with the first-time executive producer and first-time feature film director Saim Sadiq, who worked on Joyland with Malala. Interviewing them at the South Asian Excellence pre-Oscar celebration in Los Angeles, hosted by Priyanka Chopra Jonas and Anjula Acharya. When you're making your first film, obviously nobody really expects anything from you. And uh, you're kind of in a bubble, in a corner, just doing your thing. There's not too many eyes on you. But it did not stay that way long. The movie from Pakistan quickly captured the world's attention. And it starts with the youngest son getting a job at this erotic dance theater and falling in love with a, with a trans girl uh, and how that affects both of them but also his family, including his wife in particular. Joyland gives a real look at patriarchy and desire, but touching on issues like infidelity, being transgender and suicide rarely happen in Pakistani film. <laughs> Pakistan is complex. It's such a diverse country. It is, uh, you know, it has people from so many different ethnicities and uh, religions as well and different sects. And, you know, it's, it's really important for us to not see it in black and white and really ensure that we are seeing, you know, the more uh, real side of it. The movie started shattering glass ceilings. <laughs> it was the first film from Pakistan to ever be shortlisted for the Oscars. The first from its country to win an award at the Cannes Film Festival. But because of the transgender scenes, the movie was banned in its own home country. I think about six days before, we were randomly notified that because of certain complaints from people who had never seen the film, uh, the census certificates had been revoked. We caught up with Alina Khan, who played Biba, the transgender lead in the film. 
Alina shattered some of her own glass ceilings, becoming the first transgender actor from Pakistan to walk the prestigious Cannes red carpet in France. But ये था कि मुझे इंतजार था उस लम्हे का, मुझे था कि मेरी फैमिली देखेगी, मेरे बहन भाई देखेंगे, तो उनको शायद ये चीज़ की समझ आएगी कि अगर मैं ट्रांस थी, तो मैंने कुछ बैगिंग या कुछ ऐसा गलत करके उनकी इज्जत को मैं यूज़ किया, उनको मैं यूज़ नहीं किया, मैंने जिंदगी में कुछ करने की कोशिश की. And then, yet another first for this movie. It became the first film in Pakistan to ever get unbanned. After Malala spoke out condemning the ban in a variety piece, it was overturned in most places. I think everyone deserves a chance to tell their story. No one should be stopped from that. It's not about promoting a specific point of view. It's all about giving a chance to a person to tell a story from their side. You got the most famous person from Pakistan, <laughs> one of the most famous people in the world, to get it unbanned. How did that make you feel? Well, it was a lucky coincidence because Malala came on board way before any of this happened. So yeah. it was, uh, you know, nice to be like, oh, we our arsenal is not so small. <laughs> we have, yes, our arsenal is quite big. You know, we have a couple of voices that can reach far and wide. As the director points out, the controversy in Pakistan comes at a time when censorship of LGBTQ plus content in the U.S. is growing. I think easier to understand Pakistan if you think of it not as a country that's too different from America. Funnily enough, uh, I mean, uh, the drag stores are banned in Tennessee. Anything that attacks patriarchy and certain set gender norms uh, or sort of tries to talk about desire and sexuality in an open way does feel threatening to the people who are benefiting from the status quo. So I'm saying Pakistan isn't really that different from America. Do you feel that way? I think it, this is the part of... Uh storytelling that helps us connect with people from around the world, wherever we are, through movies, TV shows, uh, through the storytelling that we are able to uh, see them, what is going on in their life, and find, and find the commonalities. And helping people find those commonalities is at the core of why Malala picked this film as her first, and why she says she wants to continue putting her name behind meaningful stories. And one thing I have learned is that it's really challenging to change perspectives. And for that, you need to um, really try other means, including making movies and TV shows and documentaries and uh, comedies. And it, you know, it does not really need to be a serious um, documentary about a specific topic. It can be funny, it can be entertaining, it can have jokes, but behind all of those conversations is something that connects you uh, with those people that you see on the screen. There's something in common. And I hope that the stories that, you know, Simon makes or that I will make will be enjoyed by people. It will entertain them uh, and they will be able to uh, connect and get inspired and enjoy it. So that is her hope for viewers. Her goal for artists is to work with women and young people to show the world as they see it. That is the common thread with Malala, helping women and young people, whether it comes to access to education or making films. It's the purpose of her work. Joylet opens in New York today and the rest of the country on the 28th. Bill. All right, Zorin Shah, thank you. Netflix's new fantasy adventure film Chupa follows young Alex as he visits family in Mexico and gains an unlikely companion. Alex then embarks on the experience of a lifetime. Let's take a look. There's some bad people out there who want to take advantage of these creatures. I know you saw it. We have to get him out of here. Let's go, we gotta go. Whoa, whoa, stop. Come on, come on, come on. Are you sure you know how to drive? Demian Bashir is here to discuss the film and his role as the grandfather who helps his grandchildren protect the baby chupacabra from scientists hoping to capture the mythical creature. Demian, thank you so much thank you for taking much. the time. Let's begin thank with the film. chupacabra. You ask any Latino <laughs> kid, and they're going to tell you it's something to, to fear, yeah, right? Yeah. To be scared of. Yeah. But in this case, you're going at it in a different way. Totally. I mean, we knew about the chupacabras back in the 90s when it became this craziness, you know, this type of monster that no one really uh, knew or have seen before, right. you know, and uh, they, they were just, you know, some tales about, yeah, it's a, it's a winged uh, monster with fangs <laughs> and, uh, you know, clots and the, and this is a, the size of an elephant or, or a dog or a monkey or whatever, right? No one really knows. And no one really yeah. knew. And um, so I think it's a beautiful thing that Netflix turned that myth into this beautiful 
cute little thing, you know what I mean? It's a beautiful family story. So tell us about your character as the grandfather here. Well, I'm, I, I'm Chava. I am uh, Alex's uh, grandpa. And uh, I used to be a luchador mm. back in back in my days. I was a good luchador, and then of course I got hit of all you know all kinds of injuries. It's sort of the Mexican version of oh, our totally. WWE, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, lucha libre is like yeah, the, yeah exactly. O only a little crazier, <laughs> maybe more colorful, right. and the uh, masks and capes and uh, a lot of uh, acrobatics. And uh, so my grandkid visits me in my ranch in Mexico. And, and then we have this phenomenal adventure together with my other two grandchildren, uh, trying to keep Chupa safe. Right. And there are some pretty heavy action sequences here. Yeah. Uh, what, did you have to prepare differently for this role than others? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm usually in, in, you know, I, I love sports and uh, I try to be, uh, to be in, in, in good shape. But uh, there were some crazy lucha moves that I performed on the fantastic Christian Slater. Um, it's one called the suplex. And mm. it's literally someone going up, you know, up in the air, flipping around, boom, landing flat on your back. And uh, I can't so feel good. You will see that it doesn't feel good. Ask Christian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so when we meet Alex, he's being bullied yeah. for being Mexican. Yeah. And then he kind of resents his heritage. Then he goes on this journey, becomes proud of his background. What would you say the film's core message is that, that you're trying to get across here? That, that is one of the themes that we uh, present in the story. Uh, how important la uh, uh, family is, but not only that, how important it is to go back to your roots and connect with them in order for you to know where you're coming from and who you are, really. Um, so. Alex is, as you said, reluctant to go to Mexico and have this trip uh, to be with his uh, grandfather until he actually goes and learns many different lessons. One of them is precisely that, you know what I mean? That uh, knowing who you are and uh, what your culture represents, and then how to become brave and how to overcome sadness and loss. I would think that so many kids face the same kind of bullying yeah. for either their heritage yeah. or a trait yeah. or something. So you, you don't have to be familiar with Mexican culture. You don't no. have to be an immigrant. This is kind of like a universal. Yeah, especially because we're all immigrants. Right. And uh, we have somehow, maybe not us, but our parents and our grandparents have experienced that at some point. And uh, we move, we move a lot, you know, that's a universal phenomenon. And uh, this is what the film is about also. All right, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, Chupa is streaming now on Netflix. Demian, thank you thank so you. much thank for you coming in, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. We turn now to an interview with Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Chloe Bailey, who just released her debut solo album, In Pieces. She sat down with our Lindsay Davis to discuss her new film, Praise This, about a young woman dreaming to become a superstar through an Atlanta youth choir. Hey, baby! Oh, oh my gosh! I've always wanted a sister, and here you are! We're cousins, Jess. Cousins, sisters, it's the South. It doesn't even matter. This is our church. I am starting to feel the spirit. Sam is an aspiring musician who's struggling, and she's doing everything she possibly can to make it in the music business. She's quite unsuccessful in that, and she gets herself into some trouble, so her dad sends her to Atlanta to live with her extended family, and that's where she sees her sister cousin Jess, and she gets mixed up in the whole Praise Team World competition. I know the Lord can see my potential. I've been working. I told him it's been up since I met you. Pull the curtain. You always give the word I'm deserving. That's for certain. I was tired of being tired of being tired. Yeah. Chloe Bailey rose to fame alongside her sister Hallie with songs like Ungodly Hour. You know that I, I heard it all before. Your is a tin, but you could give me more. Now the young rising star is showcasing her different talent, Ooh. debuting her first solo album in pieces. To hold me I'm in pieces. Starring in Swarm alongside Dominique Fishback and Billie Eilish. I wouldn't be able to touch her face. My hands would be shaking. <laughs> 
And now the film Praise This, a music competition comedy where Chloe plays the lead. Her character is hoping to rise in the music industry through a youth choir. Well, I appreciate you coming down here being so annoying and begging me to sing. I wouldn't exactly call it begging. I would imagine there are some parallels between Chloe and Sam. There are definitely some parallels between Chloe and Sam, and it was nice being able to draw from inspiration of how I felt walking into rooms, meeting producers, meeting artists, things like that, where I'm like, oh my gosh, if this goes well, this will be a step further in my career. Even though we're scared and we don't know what will happen or what will come out of this, you just gotta fake it till you make it, and until you get into the rooms you need to be in. <laughs> you grew up singing in the choir? I did. I would sing sometimes with sis at our Nana's church and I was in choir in school and I've always just loved love love singing so it's like my love for God and music and acting all combined into one you have always talked about your love for God your love for music I find it fascinating that you're able to in the midst of being a big star making pop music and, and R&B and all different kinds of genres that you also have the gospel element in there. To be honest, with anything that I do, I'm just myself. And God is a huge part of my life and what keeps me stable and grounded. And I just let life lead and take me. Just last week, you dropped your first debut solo album. I did. What's it like? going out on your own? It is scary, it's exciting, and I feel like a baby bird who jumps off the tree for the first time and is realizing they actually have wings and can fly. No matter how many times you fall and break, you can get back up and piece yourself together again. And what's also in pieces are any boxes that people have put me in, what they have labeled me as, what they have written me off as, all the people who said I couldn't do this. I'm here standing and all of the things that I thought would break me actually built me up. And all the people who told you you couldn't, one person on the opposite end of that, Beyonce, of course. And you play the younger Beyonce in Fighting Temptations. Is this kind of like a, a full circle moment for you? It's, yeah, it's definitely a crazy full circle moment. I thought it was full circle when she signed Hallie and I from YouTube covers and she didn't realize it was me from the movie. Mm -hmm. And now it's like another full circle moment where I just turned four on that set. We shot it the summer in Atlanta and now 20 years later, I turned 24 on set and we shot it in the summer of Atlanta as well. And when you uh, first were finishing in pieces, did you get some feedback from Beyonce? What did she have of to say? Of course I did, of course I did. I was over the moon when she shared how much she loved it and she gave like the best minor little notes that opened up my mind and all the possibilities. From your lips to God's ears, you could do anything you want. I have had so many dreams and goals that I have surpassed and I don't realize until after the fact because we're so caught up in the moment that we don't realize what we're actually doing and accomplishing. Mm. And it didn't hit me until somebody asked me, what would younger Chloe think right now of what you're doing? So as long as I'm happy and at peace through it all, I'm willing to do anything. Did younger Chloe expect this? Younger Chloe would always blast her favorite albums and concerts loud on her stereo in her room and just dance and dance for hours and hours and just close her eyes and imagine this. So in a way, yes, and I'm happy that I got to fulfill that dream of my sister and still am and now I'm doing it on my own. And doing it well, you can watch Praise This now streaming on Peacock. That's our show for tonight. I'm Phil Lipoff. ABC News Live is here for you all night with the latest news, context, and of course analysis. You can always find us on Hulu, the ABC News app, and on abcnews.com. Good night. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! Behind the scenes, it's